Joseph James Jocko Clark was an admiral in the U.S. Navy, and he had a storybook career, honestly. He is the epitome of the U.S. sailor, the epitome of the Cherokee warrior. And being who he was, um, just his leadership and his determination, that got him the title Patton of the Pacific. Uh, he influenced a whole cadre of naval aviators and naval officers, and, and that effect is still felt today. Admiral Clark was born in Chelsea, Indian Territory. Just like most Cherokees at the time, they're just standard farming family. Well, he was born in 1893. He was the, uh, the oldest of uh, 10 children. Being the oldest, uh, he was put into a, a leadership position uh, quite young. But that ability uh, to lead gave him an edge. He would later on go to uh, the U.S. Naval Academy at Annapolis and be the first indigenous uh, person to actually graduate from the U.S. Naval Academy. Well, during War I, Admiral Clark served on the USS North Carolina, which was one of those airborne ships at the time. It's at that point in time in, in the Atlantic and, and seeing these, uh, these seaborne planes being catapulted off these ships that he, he really took the turn and wanted to go to naval aviation. He, he had this fascination with it. And um, you've got to admire a guy who will get into a field that just started and it's not fully vetted and uh, be willing to have the intestinal fortitude to, to sit in that cockpit and, and fly a plane that might end up crashing on you. And so he uh, was able to secure a position uh, in flight school uh, in 1924, and by 1925 he, would, he became a naval aviator. Now in the 30s, he was the only aviator on the uh, inspection and survey board, which would test out new aircraft and new ships. Uh, he was able to essentially tweak the design of aircraft and ships. And a lot of the, uh, the items that he instituted, not only on his vessels, but, um, but also in, in his theories as well, were actually implemented as a whole in the U.S. Navy. Will Rogers uh, was invited uh, on board the USS Pennsylvania, and uh, Jocko was assigned uh, to take him up in an aircraft and essentially catapult him off the Pennsylvania. I, I can only imagine the pressure that Jocko was under to ensure that they would both come back safely from this little pony show. You know, Admiral Clark relates that, you know, he and Will Rogers had, you know, spoke over the years because they were, they were great friends. When World War II first broke out, he became captain of his first ship, the Suwannee, and afterwards he was uh, repositioned to the Pacific Theater. It was really at this time that the thought of the aircraft carrier and all the theories that they had really hit home, that if we're going to take the fight to them, we need these mobile platforms to be able to launch bombing raids. They really stopped the Japanese in their place, and then Jocko would become the captain of the USS Yorktown, the fightingest lady of the US Navy. He took the Yorktown out, and he spearheaded the occupation of the Central and the Western Pacific Islands. His main fixation was the Bonins, Chichi Jima, Iwo Jima, and Haha Jima. Without those uh, strategic uh, supply depots, um, it couldn't have been done. He attacked that area more than any other area in the Pacific Theater, so much so that they, they actually called it the Jocko Jima Development Corporation. And his, his pilots actually made these little certificates that was worth one share in the Jocko Jima Development Corporation. And every, every pilot who made a bombing run on, on the Bonins was, was given one. He was aggressive, and he was a demanding leader. He was extremely intimidating. We'll never be ready for combat unless you flight deck crews learn right now to work as a team. Don't you men realize that before long we'll be in dangerous waters? Get it over to starboard, way over to starboard. He ran a tight ship. You know, he expected the best out of his sailors, but he was always quick to praise. The thing that he did to mitigate the negative effects that could come from being a very strong personality on the bridge was that he took care of his people. He had pilots who said, you know, we, we'd follow you into hell. I mean, they trusted him. I mean, he was the quintessential captain. The military uh, commanders that came out of the greatest generation certainly were of a different breed than our military commanders today. I don't think they reached the same level of celebrity 
as Jocko were patented. The press was all over promoting uh, their successes uh, in both Europe and the Pacific. He later on would uh, move over and be on the USS Hornet as well when he became an admiral and um, was in charge of his own task force. And his men over there loved him just the same. And then the North Koreans invaded the South. And he went over and uh, was uh, put in charge of the Seventh Fleet during the Korean War. He partnered with the Army in providing carrier-based close air support of ground troops in Korea. And he was able to change how the Army and the Navy worked together. He began doing bombing runs from the aircraft carriers behind the bombing line and was, was hitting the supply trucks and supply lines and, and the base camps uh, for the North Koreans and Red Chinese. These runs actually affectionately became known as the, the Cherokee Strikes. And, and that's where the Air Force saw the value of, of naval aviation. Being able to attack the enemy in advance of moving ground troops, that was definitely key to getting us to a position where uh, there would be the ceasefire of 53. He would end up retiring after the Korean War. He was able to retire as a full four-star admiral. The highest distinction he was given was the, the Navy Cross. And a lot of the strategy and, and, and theories that he implemented during you know, World War II and, and the Korean War, a lot of those became the standard. Well, there's only two Cherokee Naval Aviators that I'm aware of. That's myself and Jocko. There's a bond there. You know, he had such an impact, not only on the Navy, but also on our people. It makes you proud to be Cherokee.